Hello everyone, my name is Ankush Koyal and I'm a Senior Technical Account Manager here at AWS. Hey, I'm Jess Schmeida. I'm the General Manager of AWS's VPN business, which includes AWS Verified Access. In today's video, we will talk about AWS Verified Access and Jess will give you an overview of what AWS Verified Access is. In the second half of the video, I will talk about and show you in action that how you can configure AWS Verified Access in your console. AWS Verified Access is a new product we just introduced at reInvent this last year. Uh, it's a product that helps customers get connectivity to private applications, uh, which is what VPN products do all the time. And we, when we started building this product, we were asking our customers, like, how can we simplify getting access to private applications for you? And they started talking to us about something that they were calling zero trust. And zero trust means like a whole bunch of different things to all our different customers. Like we went around and we asked, okay, well, what does zero trust mean to you? And everybody had a different answer. <laughs> so, you know, when we're thinking about, okay, private application access without a VPN, um, like what does a VPN do? How does a VPN get you access to a private application? Well, it creates a private network connectivity path so that you know that if someone coming over that private path to your private application, they should be trusted because they're obviously connected to your private network. And that's great, but if you don't want to use VPN, how do you establish that same level of trust? Well, the idea here is that you want to be able to establish other forms of trust that let you know that that user can get access to this application. If you're getting some random person coming over the internet, how do you know that they are who they say they are? So for most of our customers that came down to identity and it came down to device posture, and that's sort of what led us to start to develop verified access. It's a product that allows customers to create a trusted access path to their private application uh, using zero trust principles without using a VPN. So, so let's look at a little bit more detail what we were hearing from our customers. So a lot of times right now, um, if a customer is getting access to a private application, they're going over a VPN. Uh, maybe they're joining their corporate network in a building, or maybe it's their corporate network in the cloud, but still they're joining a VPN to get onto their corporate network and then get access to their applications. The problem is, is there's a number of different people that have to coordinate in order to make this work. You've got VPN policies who can log into the VPN. You've got uh, identity-based policies who can get access to which application. You've got device policies that are managed by the IT group on how to manage the device and how to trust that device. That's a lot of different groups that have to coordinate in order to grant access. And then, frankly, the user experience, they have to go dial into the VPN, and that's you know an extra step for our users. So you know, what if we had a way to simplify all that? And that's the idea of verified access. So verified access gives you some really important benefits that we think. You know, it allows you to have better mobility, like your workforce now doesn't have to be in your office, they uh, can be on the road, they don't have to worry about connecting to your VPN, they can continue to do all the other things they want to do, but they can still get access to your private applications. Um, it fundamentally does improve security, we think, because you're checking more than just can they log into the VPN. We're now checking, like, is their device secure? Are they who they say they are? Are they in the right group? You get micro perimeters also. Like you're only accessing the application one at a time. So we, we give you better security. And we simplify the total operations because we take all those three groups that had to work together and we turn that into one. So you can see here we just take all those policies and turn it into one configuration point with verified access. We think that's really exciting. Um, so... Secure, uh, verified access gives you secure access. Uh, it's a policy per application. Um, you can also group applications together and write a policy per group. That's a nice way to simplify operations. We log access every request that comes through. We check it and then we log it so that you can uh, you know, look at your logs later to see who logged in or who got access or who was denied access. Um, and it connects to your existing security services today. Uh, this is a major tenant for our customers. They've already made a lot of investments into security services, and I'm sure you're among them. And uh, like, if you're using a certain identity provider or a certain device trust provider, you don't want to have to switch. And so we're building Verified Access to be an open platform where we can work with a variety of partners to give you a secure solution out of the box. We also log our access logs in a standard format, uh, the Open Cybersecurity Framework uh, format. It's a new uh, standard that we worked with a bunch of different SIEM and observability partners on, so you'll find that that plugs in more easily to your SIEM vendors. Um, yeah, so you can connect to AWS Identity Center to get user identity. You can connect to a third-party identity provider, for example, using the OIDC protocol. This is where, mm -hmm. where we put in open standards. and um, Today we're working with uh, Jamf and CrowdStrike for device security. So this, these are two companies that allow you to keep an eye on what's going on with your machines, manage their configuration, mm -hmm. and then those companies send us signals about device configuration. 
uh, we have a whole bunch of great partners that we went out of the gate with. We're very proud of that. Uh, and I think that's enough from the intro. Yeah, thank you so much, Jess. So one thing you mentioned in the starting of uh, your introduction is like uh, AWS, like Zero Trust is different. Everyone thinks what Zero Trust is and their way they implement is also different. So how AWS thinks about Zero Trust? Yeah, you know, AWS uh, has, it's funny, you know, these, these labels, they come along over time. Mm-hmm. And um, AWS, I, I think we've seen this with like, you know, the cloud even, <laughs> or like, um, you know, various like confidential computing, like we've been innovating on those without labeling them that way. But we've definitely been leading in these spaces because we've had to solve these problems for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And the net is that, you know, Amazon had the same kind of pressures to increase workforce mobility, to increase security, to reduce management overhead. And so we started to innovate on this our own, on our own as well. And so, um, you know, we, we built products that did a lot of the same kind of stuff that Verified Access does. Um, but, you know, we also have been giving you these kind of like, um, there's a bunch of sort of tenants that I think people work together with uh, Zero Trust around like micro perimeters, and logging and least privilege and, and, you know, individualized access. Like we've been doing that with our fundamental design of the cloud since day one. Uh, like if you think about security groups, if you think about IAM access roles, if you think about um, like all the things that you can do to lock down uh, the, the access to the various products that we give you, like we, we've been shipping Zero Trust. The entire time, which haven't been labeling it that way. So I think the the thing that we've really noticed here is that customers have now developed a certain set of expectations around what zero trust means to them. And like I mentioned, like it's it's usually identity and device trust at this point. And so we're like, okay, well we can definitely simplify that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, for us, it's just a continued evolution of uh, the you know secure practices that we've been using since day one and building the cloud. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Jess. Another question I wanted to ask about the DDoS, like many customers, they are worried about DDoS, that their application, when they are opening it to the internet and HTTPS, so they can get attacked by that. So how AVA will help them and what security provides in this DDoS? Sure. Yeah. So we, uh, every product at AWS uh, gets Shield Basic out of the box. And so uh, with Verified Access, you get Shield Basic, uh, which is mm-hmm. uh, built-in DDoS protection. Uh, so we're always we want to protect ourselves <laughs> against uh, denial of service attacks as much as we want to protect our customers, uh, and so that's kind of just baked in. Um, and at GA, which will be happening uh, early in 2023, uh, we're going to be in- integrating uh, the web application firewall, the WAF product as well, and that'll give customers a lot more fine grained control about mm-hmm. like um, you know bot protection or you know geolocation or other sorts of more detailed DDoS protection. Okay, great. And the last question I had is like, how does customer they should think about like AV versus VPN technology? Yeah, uh, you know we think both are going to add a lot of value to our customers for a long time, and it's kind of comes down to which uh, like what kind of compliance requirements might you have, or what kind of uh, connection methodology might you prefer. How do you want to manage your private applications and the access to them? So um, you know VPN technology is a great way to get people onto a controlled central network. Like I was on site with a customer yesterday uh, and they love their VPN because they can ha- set up very detailed rules. They're using security groups very heavily. They, they know exactly who gets access to what, they're managing things on the fly. It works really well for them. And so for them, switching to verified access may not be the right choice because they've got a set of systems where they guarantee security to their private applications and it meets all of their very detailed compliance requirements as well. Um, with verified access, on the other hand, we have some customers who are like, well, I don't want to deal with networking security, or I want to, um, you know, maybe allow my end users to not have to log into a VPN, and give them more flexibility. Um, there's a bunch of different choices that come down to how you think about the two. Um, but verified access then helps you get private application connectivity um, without having to set up a lot of the detailed networking stuff that you otherwise might, might have to. Okay, great. So next, let's go into an action and see how Verified Access work. I'll give you a quick demo on that. For this demo, we have deployed a basic architecture in our environment. Where we have two application, HR application and sales application, sitting behind internal load balancer. We have created a Route 53 public hosted zone for example.com. In addition, we have enabled AWS IAM Identity Center, where we have created three users, HR, admin, and sales user. Also, we created two groups, HR group and sales group, where 
HR user is part of my HR group and sales user is part of my sales group and admin is part of both HR and sales group. We have also created SSL certificate in AWS certificate manager. Our goal is that HR users should be able to access HR application by using the public endpoint and the sales user should be able to access sales application by using sales endpoint and admin should be able to access both the application HR and sales. So for that, we will start creating our AWS verified access. The first thing we will create a trust provider by using AWS IAM Identity Center. Trust provider is a service that sends information about users and device called trust data to AWS verified access. So we are using AWS IAM Identity Center for our user identities and for device we will be using CrowdStrike which is our third party trust provider. After creating the trust provider, we need to create a AWS verified instance by using this trust provider. Within the verified access instance, we'll create two group, verified access groups, one for HR application and one for sales application, and we'll add a policy to control who can access these applications. Within those groups, we'll create two endpoints for one for each application. And after creating this endpoint, we'll get an endpoint domain name, which we will add to our Route 53 domain or public hosted zone as a C name. So once we add this SC name, this user should be able to access this application by using our public endpoints. So next, let's go to the console and see how you can create all these components of AWS Verified Access. Okay, I am on my VPC console. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, you will see AWS Verified Access as a new section where you will click AWS Verified Access Trust Provider and click on Verified Access Trust Provider. Give it a name, I am Trust Provider. Give it description. Then give a policy reference name as SSO, which will be used later while creating the policy. And then click on Create Verified Access Trust Provider. Now we will create Device Trust Provider. For that, click on Create Verified Access Trust Provider. Give a name, Device Trust Provider. Give a description. Give a policy reference as CrowdStrike, which we'll be using later on. Select device trust provider. Give it provider name as CrowdStrike and give it an end ID, which you can get from your CrowdStrike and click create. Next, we will create verified access instance. For that, we'll click on create verified access instance. We'll give a name, AVA instance. Then we'll give it description. We'll select the trust provider from the drop down. We'll select IAM and then we'll click create verified access trust means instance. Then we'll select this instance. We'll add our other our trust provider, which is device trust provider, by clicking on attach and selecting that trust provider and click on attach. If you refresh, both the trust providers are attached. Next, we will create verified access group, one for each of my application. We'll click on verified access group here and then click on create verified access group. We'll give a name. HR AVA group will give a description and then we'll select the verified access instance type which we created earlier. I've already wrote a policy, so I'll copy paste here. And what this policy is saying that this user whosoever want to log in should belong to the HR group, should have Amazon.com as an email address, and from the device, the device posture should be greater than 40. And then we'll click on create verified access group. Similarly, we'll create one more group for my sales application. Okay, my sales group is also created and under the policy, I use the group ID from my sales group from my IAM Identity Center and my device posture should be greater than 80. Next, we will create verified access endpoint by clicking on verified access endpoint, then click on create verified access endpoint. I've already populated this information to save the time. We'll provide the name, description, We'll select the verified access group which we created earlier. Then we'll provide the application domain name and the ARN from the SSL certificate which we created for this uh, domain name. Then we'll select the attachment type as VPC. We'll select the security group. We'll provide the domain prefix as HR. Since we are creating this endpoint for load balancer, we will select load balancer from the drop down. For the protocol, we'll select HTTP and port as 80. Then we'll select the load balancer which we created and two subnets where this load balancer is deployed. We are not adding any policy at the endpoint level because we already have at the group level, but if you want, you can do that. 
Next, we will create the create verified access endpoint. Endpoint for my HR application is created and is in active state. And similarly, I created an endpoint for my sales application as well. Next, I copied the endpoint domain and I created a CNAME in my public hosted zone. And I created one for sales and one for my HR application. Next, I will access these applications from my device where CrowdStrike is enabled and configured and device posture of this device is 50 and I will log in by using admin user who has access to both of these applications. Since the device posture is 50 for this device, admin will be able to access only HR application, not the sales application because of the policy configured at the group level of these applications. Next, I will put the URL for my HR application and will use the username as admin. We'll give the password and you will see that the user is able to access the HR application. Now I'll try to access the sales application for the same user and you will see this user is not able to access this sales application. Okay, so you have seen that how you can configure verified access in your console. If you want to learn more about AWS Verified Access, you can scan this QR code, which will take you to the AWS Verified Access documentation. And that's all we want you to cover in today's video. Thank you so much for joining. Have a nice day.